Hey y'all, my name is Angelica. I am one of the students in Bryce's coaching program. I'm a bookkeeper and I've been doing my own business now for about two and a half years. I decided to break out and do my own business because my husband and I built this school bus tiny home and it allowed me to have freedom to be remote and virtual and be able to help my clients while I was out on the road traveling. And so that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do that. Now I had prior accounting experience and worked for accountants and stuff in the past and decided to break out on my own. And you may be feeling the same way where you have all this experience and you want more freedom and you wanna travel and you wanna do all these different things and you wanna start your own business but you're not quite sure the steps that you need to take to do a bookkeeping business. Well, I'm here to share some steps with you of things that you need to do in order to become a bookkeeping business. So the first things first, you need to come up with a name. And this is important because it's part of your branding, part of what people are gonna remember you as. And also, it's going to be something that you need to possibly register with the state. I know for me, whenever I lived in Colorado, I had to do a DBA, which is doing business as, and my bookkeeping name, which is the Math Magician Bookkeeping. And basically I had to give my name some thought. I thought it was a fun play on words, mathematician plus magician, you know, getting books, people's books in together, something magical and exciting. So that's the reason I came up with my name. I know it sounds kind of corny sometimes, but it's unique and it stands out. So find a name that is unique to you, stands out, gets your point across, lets people know what you were there for. So once you actually have your name, like I said, you're gonna have to register it. So either a DBA, trade name or uh, you know you're gonna have to register as an entity as well so there's sole proprietor s corp llc c corp all of those other business entities and llc provides you with a little bit more security that way you're not you know 100 percent liable personally if something were to happen within your business but there are other fees associated with that whenever you register so do your own research and find out what entity you need to become and whenever you do so, make sure that you know the rules and laws in your state because some states require certain certifications and licenses to actually practice as a bookkeeper. So that's something that you need to consider of, you know, do you have to be licensed? Do you need certification? If so, then you need to take proper steps to do that. I personally didn't have to do that in the state of Colorado and I don't have to in the state of Tennessee. I actually don't even need to technically register my business in the state of Tennessee because it is a tax exempt business. So anyways, those are other things. And then also, if you are going to go with anything other than sole proprietorship, you need to register for an EIN number. That's your employer identification number. As a sole proprietor, you just are going to be using your social security. That's gonna be your identification number across all the boards. So like I said, do your research, make sure that you know what entity you want to do. So another good thing to practice and to do, not only in your bookkeeping for your clients, but for yourself, is to create a business bank account. This separates your personal income or your personal income and expenses from your business income and expenses. Just like how you would with one of your clients. You don't want to get their stuff mixed up and it all integrate together because then whenever tax season comes around, it's going to be really difficult to have those categorized and separated. So make sure that you have a business account, even if it's just idle for a while. And there are several free bank accounts that you can choose from for like free business checking accounts. Uh, I have here Bluevine, best overall for free business checking. There's Chase, best free business checking with a traditional bank. Mercury is best for digitally based businesses. Bank of America, best for businesses with larger monthly cash deposits. So that probably wouldn't be the best for you starting out. There's going to be fees associated with it. First Internet Bank, best for earning interest on multiple account types. Novo, best for free international ATM usage. Capital One, best for a traditional bank with unlimited transactions, but it's not free. And then U.S. Bank, best for freelancers and businesses with minimal monthly transactions. So I actually use U.S. Bank as my own right now. Um, that's kind of what I started off with, and it has worked out perfectly fine. There's no uh, fees, monthly fees for anything, and it suits me pretty well. So once that is done, you also want to consider getting some type of business insurance. So you can also look for business insurance with like your car insurance, perhaps, but you can also be sufficient enough with 
E and O insurance. So that stands for errors and omissions. So you want to at least look into that that way if you know you create you do something in someone's books and there's some kind of error and they are liable for it as far as their taxes and auditing goes with the IRS then at least you are covered under that errors and omissions insurance. And I know the Hartford the Hartford insurance has that as an option for you. That's at least something that I use. So then once you have all these things in place, you should have already this stuff, but you need to at least have a laptop or some kind of computer because most everything done is most everything is done with software accounting right now and like I said, I do everything remotely and there's no way I could do this without having a computer. And I know for me, whenever I first started out, like Best Buy has some really good options on like open box deals. Uh, the computer I have now is a really nice computer and I got it for $300 in the open box and their open box items are usually just like things that have a small scratch on them, um, you know, items that someone bought, realized they didn't like and return it, but usually generally things that actually don't have issues. So like I said, I got an open box computer for about $300 and it runs all my programs, runs fast and efficient and I love it. So then once you have your computer, your other office supplies, you need to consider what software you're going to use for accounting. Now me personally, I wanted to have as many options available as possible. So I went with QuickBooks Online, I went out to Xero, I looked into Wave, I looked into several different, uh, Sage Accounting, I looked into de several different accounting softwares so that I could be broad and open to any clientele that happened to use those. Now that I've been a little more established in my business, I generally like to transition clients over into one accounting for uh, accounting software over the other just because it's a little bit more easier and it usually suits their needs better. But obviously there's QuickBooks Online, which is one of the most popular ones out there. You've got QuickBooks Desktop and you've also got, you know, like I said, Zero with an X and you have Sage Accounting. So those are things that you can look into and what I did immediately as soon as I got in with an accounting software like QuickBooks, you can do QuickBooks Online Accountant. And this gives you an option to have all your clients in one space and all you need to do is do the certification. So every year they have you do QuickBooks certification to make sure that you understand the certain features and uh, you know elements that QuickBooks is doing because they're constantly updating things and they want you to be aware of what's going on. That way you can offer your clients the best services and also QuickBooks, you know, can refer you out. I know with QuickBooks Online, whenever you're certified, you become part of um, like a, a group where, you know, people that are looking for certain clients and stuff in their area, they can kind of see you listed in there as a pro advisor and people are more likely to reach out to you once you have that certification. You can also get certified in Zero as well, and I believe Sage. So those are things that you need to look into whenever you're wanting to do your bookkeeping business is those accounting softwares. Now, when it comes to QuickBooks Desktop, don't feel like you have to rush and get QuickBooks Desktop set up on your computer. I actually have a client of mine who lives about an hour and a half away, and he uses QuickBooks Desktop. So I tried to get him to transition into QuickBooks Online because there is a way to do that, but he's an older gentleman and didn't really want to do that. So anyway, what I like to do is do remote, like remote into his computer. And so there's remote desktop softwares out there. I use Splashtop Business, but there's like um, Chrome Remote. There's a few other um, like remote software programs that you can get for fairly cheap. I believe Chrome is actually free, so you might want to look into that. And then you can actually access your client's computer on their desktop and use QuickBooks Desktop. That way you're not having to do it yourself because QuickBooks Online Accountant or QuickBooks Accountant for Desktop can be quite pricey. So once you have all of those things established, which you can do this before or after you do your website, for me, I personally, or after you do your certification, for me personally, I went ahead, when I first started, I knew my business name, I knew everything, and I started up a website. 
and I actually created my own website, but I know a lot of people don't really want to take the time to do that. So you can do Wix, GoDaddy.com. There are several platforms out there that you can use for a simple website that has your name, your services. You don't have to have your prices on there, but your name, your services, a little about you page goes a long way and a contact page because you want them to come to you. Um, then you also want to get some business cards going because you never know who you're going to run into and you want to be able to drop those off at certain locations. Whenever someone mentions that they have a business, you can mention, oh yeah, I have a bookkeeping business. Is anybody doing your books for you? And hand them your business card. So you want to make sure that you have business cards in place, at least 250 to 500. I know they're not as popular nowadays because you can do everything so much online but like I said you want to at least have a few on you at all times in your purse in your briefcase what have you in your car that way you can pass them off to anybody you want to get a logo created it doesn't have to be anything crazy fancy I actually hired a gentleman because of my name the math magician bookkeeping I wanted it to be kind of a whimsical thing and I couldn't find any anything um, you know that I could create so I actually hired someone for about 150 bucks to create a logo for me and my little tagline um, so you can do that option or you can use canva there's like pick monkey there's all kinds of other things that you can use out there uh, pix art is a really cool thing that you can use too so there are certain apps and items that you can use to create a logo it doesn't have to be anything crazy just something small and recognizable that points back to you and your name. Now you also want to get a separate email address. You don't want everything, again, like with your bank account, you don't want everything going into your personal because your personal is probably already cluttered as it is. So you want to make sure that you're actually got an email set up. I originally started off with a Google Gmail email and that's what I use the most. But through my website, I was able to um, get an actual email address set up with that. So instead of the math magician bookkeeping at gmail.com, I have everything when I put in inquiries at the math magician bookkeeping.com that actually has my website in it. It looks more professional usually than having just Gmail. I mean, Gmail sufficient enough, trust me, but it looks a little bit more professional whenever you actually have your website in behind the at sign. So Whenever I have anything inquiries at the mathmagicianbookkeeping.com, I have it redirected to go into my Gmail account. That way it still looks professional, but I can still access it all in the same thing. And we can talk about that in another video later on. But those are some items that you need to keep in mind as far as, you know, like I said, having a separate email address, uh, certain softwares that you can do to make sure that you're getting your tasks done, etc. So then we need to talk about your pricing. Now this is where I struggled with the most because I had worked for accounting firms and stuff like that and seen what they were charging and I felt like for me personally I was just then starting out. I don't have a whole lot of schooling under my belt. I felt a little unsure of what to charge but you can look up certain things in the area uh, but basically Bryce has actually some good information on what you should be charging because I was charging my clients way too low. And your clients will, you know, it can seem scary because you're like, how in the world am I going to get clients if I'm charging them, you know, a million dollars an hour? Trust me, they will end up paying for you because of the value. And like I said, Bryce has in his coaching segment, you know, in his coaching program, all kinds of things about how to actually get your prices to where your clients will pay for you and the value that you offer. But basically... There's options, so you can choose to do hourly, flat rate, or you can do hourly and then go to flat rate. I know for a while, I initially had it set up where I was charging like 25 bucks a month, or, well, $25 an hour, and then after the first three months, once I actually got a hang of how many transactions and what they had coming in, I converted that into a flat rate over time based off of like, okay, well, if they're getting about eight hours a, of a week, eight hours a month of work for me to do at $25 an hour, then it's going to be, I can't remember exactly what that is. Someone do the math of uh, $200 a month, you know, that I would be charging them flat rate. That way they have an idea of what's going on every month. 
but that's not you don't have to necessarily charge flat rate you can offer program pricing but that's something we could get into in another video later on but like I said Bryce has some really good ideas on those things so if you're interested then you should set up a call with him and he can go into more detail about how to market yourself and how to set up proper pricing to create a successful bookkeeping business so again we're gonna be talking about marketing like I said, Bryce has some great insights on how to do that. Um, just a few that he's already talked about here on YouTube is you initially want to start off contacting friends, family, acquaintances, anybody that you know that has a business. You want to look them up on LinkedIn, Facebook, what have you. Message them, see how they're doing. Ask if they still got their business going. Let them know, hey, I have started my own business. I'm looking for clients at the moment. Do you or yourself need anything? You know, who's doing your books for you? If you'd like, we can set up a free consultation. You can go forward with that. But that is usually the first step is to speak with your inner circle and your outer circle, you know, people that you usually know because they actually have a good reference of who you are and they can at least refer people out to you. Um, another thing that is mentioned is getting on LinkedIn and marketing yourself on LinkedIn. That doesn't mean creating a crap ton of content. It means just getting on there, making connections, talking with people, asking them if they have someone doing their books, and then trying to figure out how to help them because usually they don't quite know how to handle their books or they have someone, you know, their, their wife, their sister, someone doing their books, and they're gonna start growing and not really know how to figure that out and they may be honestly doing it wrong. So you never know, don't ever write anybody off because there's always a chance that they will come to you tomorrow and say, you know what, my wife or sister or you know, so-and-so isn't doing the job as great as I thought and I'd like to hear more about the services you offer. Um, what, the way I actually started out getting my bookkeeping clients though is I went on Google, searched a bunch of businesses in my area, and I would search them by industry. So like painters, landscapers, photographers, I would search each industry, find each and every business, go to their website, click on their email address, and then send them an email. Hi, I'm new in the area. Or, hi, I just started my own bookkeeping business and give them a quick synopsis of what I do and if they'd be interested or if they have anybody interested um, that they could refer out to me. And I actually got a few clients that way. Another way that I got clients, which you have to pay a little bit of money for, for the leads they bring in is through th Thumbtack. And that's kind of how I got started because those people are already looking for bookkeeping services. But like I said, Bryce has some awesome tips on how to market yourself, things that have helped my success a lot. So I highly recommend setting up a call, finding out more of how he could help you out with your business as well. So another thing that you want to consider is once you have your prices set in place, once you've gone through the initial consultation, once you actually have some customers, you need to have a bookkeeping agreement set up some type of contract and I can talk with Bryce about setting up something that y'all might be able to download that's like a contract template because I have a good bookkeeping agreement that I like to send out to everybody that talks about um, you know the terms of agreement the scope of work um, and then I also like to include in there my little pricing calculator sheet which is something that Bryce offers and basically that just goes over all of the parameters we talked about, talks about the scope of work, and then that way they can actually see for themselves what we had discussed and how the price came to be, the price that they have on there. It's not necessary though. But some things that I like to include in the bookkeeping agreement is having something set up for recurring monthly payments where you actually have some kind of credit card recurring authorization form. That way you're not having to wait on them to pay you every single month. You don't have to hunt anything down. It's just already set up and good to go. And you don't have to worry about wasting their time or tracking them down and wasting your time. It's something that I'll always be aware of. And this is mostly pretty, pretty well used whenever you have a flat rate, but it's also applicable to hourly rates too. Something else that I like to put in as well is having them give me their login information. 
So I actually have a software that I use called Client Hub and I get to communicate securely with my clients through that and put in files, they can send me files, stuff like that, um, where I actually, you know, have access to their login information and have it written in a secure area. But that way, because there's way too many times that I'm relying on my clients to send me their monthly statements and, you know, finance reports from, you know, other apps and softwares they use. And they do not send them to me in time. And I'm having to hunt them down and try to figure out, okay, well, I'm trying to get this done for you. And I need it now. So lately I've been implementing in um, having them give me their bank login information. Um, when it comes to sales tax, like Department of Revenue for whatever state that is. Um, here in Tennessee, it's obviously the Tennessee Department of Revenue. I have them give me that information. Um, that way I have it on file and I can just look it up, file their sales tax for them. I don't have to bombard them with a million questions and texts and emails Hey, asking, Hey, can you send me this? Can you send me that? I can get in their bank and just see the statements, the transactions, get a better idea. Sometimes, you know, they can give you the statement, but there might be a check number and you it doesn't have like a specific check in what it is. So it's just a little bit easier to implement that. You don't necessarily have to, but these are things that I found along in my business that are very helpful. So then you also want to figure out how to set up your invoicing. You know, QuickBooks Online actually offers invoicing through, because once you have your QuickBooks Online accountant, you have every, all your clients here, but you can also process your own stuff. And QuickBooks does allow you to invoice out. It does even offer a recurring payment system. It also offers a way for them to pay you directly. So there's certain options you can do. There's other softwares out there like Bill.com that you can use for invoicing. Personally for me, I use QuickBooks Online and it's pretty simple. And anytime a transaction comes through that a customer or a client of mine has paid, it'll actually match up the transaction to that invoice. So I don't have to worry about that. But yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up for now. Those are basically the things you need to think about when you're wanting to set up a bookkeeping business. But it sounds a little daunting. It sounds like a lot, but it really honestly isn't too bad. And you will learn over time what certain methods and systems work for you. Like I said, there are certain things that I'm implementing lately. And yeah, I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, subscribe to Bryce, and also book a call with him if you are curious of how to get your bookkeeping business on a successful page, how to learn certain marketing strategies, and how to gain more clients. So thank you again so much, and I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.